Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And uh, uh, thank both of you for uh, attending here today and joining us. Obviously, this is a very important relationship. Uh, my state of Nebraska, for example, is an agricultural state. We produce a lot of soybeans. Who else produces a lot of soybeans? Brazil, right? So it, uh, it's a very important relationship uh, for us. Um, so, S Secretary Nichols, are territorial and integrity and sovereignty key tenets of the UN Charter? So does the Biden administration support Brazil's ascension to a permanent member status on the UN Security Council given its lack of support for uh, Ukrainian territorial integrity? Well, um, the government of Brazil voted in favor of the UN General Assembly resolution condemning Russia's invasion and also joined us in a uh, statement when the two presidents met uh, condemning it on February 10th as well. Uh, the United States supports the modest expansion uh, of unelected, uh, sorry, of elected members to the UN Security Council. Um, it is a conversation for each region to have as to which countries those would be. Um, but we believe that an expanded Security Council can more effectively represent global interests. But even though Brazil has come out and condemned the invasion, they haven't been exactly supportive, right? They rebuffed. German Chancellor's attempts to get ammunition to be able to help Ukraine defend itself, correct? Uh, President Lula has met virtually with President Zelensky. Um, and again, the, Brazil has voted to condemn Russia's invasion in the United Nations, um, as well as some United Nations specialized bodies. The importance of working with Brazil on a whole host of issues uh, is crucial for the United States. And right now, Brazil uh, is a non-permanent elected member of the Security Council uh, until next year, and we're working closely with them in that fora. All right, great, thank you. So the Monroe Doctrine has been a cornerstone of uh, US foreign policy for two centuries, uh, you know, warning other powers against interfering in the Western Hemisphere. And over the last two decades, what we've seen is China has been allowed extensive access to tighten its grip across Latin America, including Brazil. Uh, by the end of President Lula's first presidency in 2010, uh, Brazil-China trade had gone up from virtually none to $60 billion. And in 2009, China became Brazil's top trade partner, and Brazil received a record um, deal of $7 billion from the China Development Bank for offshore development. In the decades since, China-Brazil economic ties have transformed and, in fact, um, Brazil accounts for 47% of China's foreign direct investment in Latin America, totaling more than $66 billion in 2010. There's obvious concerns that China will continue to leverage these economic ties to expand influence in the region. Earlier this month, United States uh, Trade Representative Catherine Tai visited Brazil, where she emphasized the improving labor rights and environmental protections as common areas, uh, interest in common areas for the United States. However, there seems to be little interest from the administration in negotiating far more ambitious trade agreements for making significant investments. Secretary Nichols, is the Biden administration doing enough to discourage countries like Brazil from pursuing investments from China and seeking trade with China? Should we be doing more to be able to develop that relationship? We're focused on demonstrating that the U.S. is the best partner for the countries around the region, uh, particularly Brazil. The United States is the largest source of foreign direct investment in Brazil, providing high-quality job opportunities and growth for the benefit of both of our peoples. Um, we see around the hemisphere that the promises that the PRC makes about the quality of its investments, about the debt associated with its investments are false. I've been to numerous countries in this hemisphere and have people point out to me stadiums with problems in their construction, buildings with problems, highways that are falling apart, and hidden debts that countries didn't know that they were going to have to assume that are crushing the budgets telling the stories of these experiences and bringing others together to say, hey, you took this deal from China, tell your neighbor what your experience was. I think that, that makes a, a very compelling case. Uh, obviously, as a, Brazil is a sovereign country and they can make their own decisions, but I think we're putting on the table of the kind of financing, the kind of investment um, that will help both of our nations prosper and provide uh, a reliable, transparent uh, alternative 
alternative to what the PRC has on an offer. So are you concerned about what the PRC is doing, though, with regard to Latin America and Brazil? Absolutely. Uh, and I thank this body for the resources that you've recently appropriated to help us compete even more strongly uh, against the PRC. Great. Thank you, Secretary Nichols. Appreciate it.